This is the familiar household thermometer in which the mercury rises or falls freely with the temperature of the air. This, however, is a clinical thermometer used to take body temperature. It is different than the household thermometer because this constriction in the mercury tube just above the mercury bulb causes the mercury to remain at the temperature registered until it is shaken down. This particular clinical thermometer is numbered from 94 degrees to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature range usually covers any extreme degree of body temperature. The arrow on the thermometer indicates the average normal body temperature, 98 and 6 tenths degrees taken orally, that is, by mouth. Normal body temperatures vary, but 98 and 6 tenths degrees is the accepted normal for most people. The mercury tube in a clinical thermometer is found between the scale of numbers and the fractional degree lines. This little ridge over the mercury tube is actually a magnifying glass that makes it easier to find the mercury in the tube. These long lines represent the degree of temperature. The uneven numbers are omitted for lack of space, but are indicated by the long lines above the mercury tube. This long line represents normal temperature. Each of these short lines represents two-tenths of one degree. Now for a practice reading of the thermometer. The thermometer is essentially a right-handed instrument to read Therefore, it should be held between the thumb and forefinger with bulb to the left. See where the mercury now rests at 102, right on the line where the number 102 shows. Now for a more difficult temperature reading. Here the mercury stands between the numbers 102 and 104. The long line between 102 and 104 indicates 103 degrees but the mercury is not directly on the 103 line. So, count the fractional tenths of a degree. Two, four, six tenths. That means the correct temperature reading is 103 and six tenths degrees. Now, another reading for practice. Here the mercury lies between the numbers 94 and 96. Now, count the tenths of a degree beyond the last long line, or 94 degrees. Here's one and two lines beyond 94 degrees. And the mercury is at the third line, or 94 and 6 tenths degrees. Incidentally, this temperature reading happens to be below normal, or subnormal. And if you suspect the patient has fever, then there is good reason to believe that you've not placed the thermometer in the patient's mouth correctly, or you've not allowed it to remain in his mouth a full five minutes, or perhaps that he has eaten something cold. In any case, you must check the temperature again. Any condition that results in the patient's mouth being unusually hot or cold can affect the temperature when taken by mouth. Now here the mercury is past the 104 degree mark. One, two, three, four small lines. Four lines mean eight-tenths degree, so the temperature is 104 and eight-tenths degrees, a very high oral temperature. If the mercury is not easily apparent, turn the thermometer so as to bring the mercury tube clearly in front of your eyes. Remember, look for the mercury column between the number scale and the lines above it. Here the mercury is at 101 and 2 tenths degrees. Reading the thermometer is something that requires a little patience and practice. If you try to read a thermometer when you're looking into the light, it will be difficult to find the mercury easily. The proper way is to allow the light to fall over your shoulder. If before using the thermometer, the mercury reads above 95 degrees, it must be shaken down. Unless the mercury is at a considerably lower point than body temperature before using, 
it will not give a true reading. It must be shaken down to 95 degrees or below. The proper care of the thermometer starts with removing it from its case carefully over a safe area so that even if it is dropped, it might still escape damage. The mercury bulb goes into the patient's mouth, so hold the thermometer on the opposite end. Then, making sure to stand clear of all hard objects, the mercury is shaken down using a simple wrist action that approximates shaking water off the fingers. Practice this at home using an ordinary pencil until you can do it properly. Before the temperature is taken orally, moisten the thermometer with cool water to lubricate it. Then, place it carefully under the patient's tongue and to the side of his mouth. The mouth is closed gently. The thermometer must remain correctly in place for five minutes to be sure of accurately recording the patient's correct temperature. When taking a temperature, the mercury will rise in this tube to a point equal to body temperature. And of course, the numbers on the thermometer and the fractional lines above the numbers tell us the patient's exact temperature in degrees. Here, for instance, the mercury shows the patient's temperature is 102 degrees. After the five minute interval, the thermometer is removed and wiped dry. Once you have taken the patient's temperature, record it immediately on paper. You can then keep a complete record of the patient's temperature as you take it. Usually, temperature is taken every four hours. Generally, it is apt to be lower in the morning than at night. Mark the record at what time you have taken the temperature, and if you take it orally, mark an O next to the reading. You must tell the doctor how the temperature was taken, as the reading will vary according to the method used. Unless the doctor orders otherwise, cleanse the thermometer as follows. First, a clean disposable tissue or other soft wipe is moistened with cool water and then soaked. Starting at the top, the thermometer is wiped downward with a firm rotary motion, making sure to cleanse the graduation marks that run down the side of the thermometer. And then down over the bulb with the same action. Dispose of the tissue. Then rinse with a clean wipe moistened with cool water using the same firm rotary wiping action. A second cleansing is done with soap. Use the same firm rotary wiping action to make sure the thermometer is clean. Then a cool water rinse to remove the soap done exactly the same way with a firm rotary action down and now over the bulb and the wipe is discarded. The thermometer is now properly cleansed and ready to dry with a dry wipe if it is no longer to be used. Then it can be put away. The mercury bulb of the thermometer is inserted first when the thermometer is returned to its protective case. Because the thermometer is a delicate instrument, it is recommended that it be kept in a safe place on a small tray in the sick room. It must be kept out of direct sunlight and away from heat. Once you have mastered the simple technique of using a thermometer, you can keep your doctor informed of the patient's progress. This will be of material aid to your doctor in caring for the patient in your home.
For infants and young children, the rectal method of taking a temperature is often prescribed. For this method, the security type thermometer is used. It has a stubbier mercury bulb. Average normal rectal temperature is 99 and 6 tenths degrees. The rectal thermometer is lubricated with an oily substance. Then, the thermometer bulb is carefully inserted and held in the infant's rectum. The baby is held as still as possible. After the five minute period, the thermometer can be read and the infant's temperature recorded. After the temperature has been entered, mark the letter R to signify the temperature was taken rectally. The axillary method of taking temperature is used when the temperature cannot be taken orally or rectally. After the armpit is wiped dry of perspiration, the thermometer is placed under the arm and the arm folded tightly across the chest, hand grasping the opposite shoulder. The axillary method requires holding the thermometer in place a full 10 minutes, and normal temperature taken this way is approximately one degree below the oral normal of 98 and 6 tenths degrees, or 97 and 6 tenths degrees. In recording the temperature taken by the axillary method, put an A beside it as a reminder to tell the doctor you took the temperature by the axillary method. Now to review. Remember, to find the mercury, hold the thermometer on the end opposite the mercury bulb. Turn it slowly until you pass the scale of degree numbers. And right above the numbers is the mercury tube. The thermometer may easily be broken if shaken down over a table or other hard object. The thermometer is a delicate instrument and must be handled properly. The mercury must be carefully shaken down to or below 95 degrees before the temperature is taken. One of the three ways of taking temperature is the axillary method. After drying the armpit, place a security type thermometer in the armpit for 10 minutes. For the rectal method, oil the security type thermometer, carefully insert, and hold it in place for five minutes. In taking the temperature orally, place the moistened thermometer carefully under the patient's tongue and to the side of the mouth. Have him keep his mouth closed. Oral temperature takes five minutes. And remember the average normal temperatures. Average oral temperature, 98 and 6 tenths degrees. Average rectal temperature, 99 and 6 tenths degrees. Average axillary temperature, 97 and 6 tenths degrees. Keep a record of the patient's progress, the time the temperature was taken, and the method used. In cleansing the thermometer, unless the doctor specifies some other method, cleanse with soap first. Using a firm rotary action starting at the top, the thermometer is wiped downward, making sure to cleanse the graduation marks that run down the side and the mercury bulb. Dispose of the tissue. Rinse with a clean wipe moistened with cool water. A second cleansing is done with soap. Use the same firm rotary wiping action to make sure the thermometer is clean. Then a cool water rinse to remove the soap and the wipe is discarded.
The thermometer is now properly cleansed and ready to dry if it is no longer to be used. And last, remember to return the thermometer to its case, mercury end first, to protect it at all times when not in use.